हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम ऑन बायोफेन लर्निंग आई एम डॉक्टर सरिता अग्रहरी होप ऑल ऑफ यू डूइंग वेल स्पेशली स्टेइंग हेल्दी एंड हैप्पी सो इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट क्लास नाइन्थ चैप्टर सेवन दैट इज डाइवर्सिटी इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म ऑन कंप्लीशन ऑफ दिस सेशन यू विल बी एबल टू नो फाइव किंगडम्स इन टू विच द लिविंग वर्ल्ड इज डिवाइडेड classification of living organisms into six hierarchical levels and the scientific names as per the linnean binomial system so first look at biodiversity what is biodiversity biodiversity means the diversity of life it means the variety of life forms found in a particular region each organism in this world whether it is plant animal or a microorganism is unique in itself Do you know there are approximate ten million species on the planet, although we actually know only one or two millions of them. This uniqueness of individual forms on the basis of diversity among the living organism, they differ from one another in external appearances like size, color, pattern, internal structure, nutrition, behavior, habitat, etc. so what is taxonomy taxonomy is a branch of biology that helps us in identifying describing and naming organisms to systematic method of classifying plants and animals based upon similarities and their characteristics one of the function of taxonomist is to provide a scientific name for every living creature the uniform international naming is very very important because common name or vernacular name for the same plant or animal vary from region to region for example cabbage cabbage is a common name and the scientific name is brassica oleraceae now let's study classification of living organisms in this we will study and discuss these points why classification is so important what are the contribution of important peoples and then uh, binomial nomenclature and the five kingdom classification system now let's look at why classification is so important reason of classification as you know each organism is different from all others to lesser or greater extent for example aapke class mein bahut sare bachche hain अगर आप उनको कंपेयर करोगे तो सब अलग अलग दिखते हैं सबकी हाइट अलग अलग है सबके फीचर्स अलग अलग हैं तो हम क्या करते हैं हम उन्हें उनके नाम से पहचानते हैं लेकिन अगर किसी दो बच्चों के नाम अगर सेम है तो आप उनके सरनेम से पहचानते हो या उनकी हाइट से पहचानते हो या फीचर से पहचानते हो वैसे ही क्लासीफिकेशन हमें लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म की स्टडी को ईजियर बना देता है कैसे क्लासीफिकेशन makes the study of life forms easier by grouping them in similar and dissimilar categories as you know there is lots of biodiversity approximately 3 million to 100 million species exist on the earth with many more added on each day in such condition how do you identify them so the classification of living organism is very very important so the taxonomist classify the organisms on the basis of their structure origin and behavior now let's study the important people who had major contribution in classification of living organism approximately 2000 years ago aristotle was the first taxonomist he divided organisms into plants and animals he classified animals according to whether they lived on land in water or in air this is very simple way of looking at life but misleading too for example organisms live in sea includes corals whales octopuses starfish and sharks but they are very different from each other in numerous ways only their habitat is same for example frog ducks they live both on both in water or in land mm. also so the classification need to be improved after that carl linnaeus had major contribution in classification of living organism he is known as father of modern taxonomy he used four categories class order genus and species for classification 
He recognized species as a basic unit of classification. He developed modern system of naming known as binomial nomenclature, two word name, genus and species. The Linnaeus method also known as Linnean taxonomy. The Linnean binomial system designed to give two words naming system to an organism. First name represents as genus and second name represents as species. For example, Homo sapiens. Here Homo is genus and sapiens is a species. Like that Amoeba proteus. Amoeba is genus and proteus is species. Genus name is followed by species name. First letter of genus name is always capitalized but first letter of species name is never capitalized. Both words are underlined or italicized. Every living organism is given two proper names. First name is genus and the second name is species to which it belongs. First name is shared with other member or its genus but second name of the organism is specific and is not shared with any other genus. These scientific names is guided by a set of rules in the International Code of Bionomenclature. Each genus contains animals that have very similar features and are closely related. For example, Flady, cat family. It contains uh, genus Felis, small cats, domestic cats, panthers, tigers, leopards, jaguars and lions. So, what is the importance of uh, or advantages of the scientific name? Why we are doing this? Because they are very very unique. They are understood and followed all over the world. The scientific names provided are often descriptive and also indicate some important characteristics of the organism. What is classification? To study the diversity among living organisms, in an effective way, we need to arrange various kinds of organisms in systematic manner. The method of arranging organisms into groups or sets on the basis of similarities and differences is called classification. Here we are going to study the five kingdom classification system. So what is the importance of classification? It makes the study of wide variety of organisms easy. It projects before us a picture of all life forms at a glance. It is essential to understand the interrelationship among different groups of organisms, how the ecosystem works. It forms a base for the development of other biological sciences. Classification of living organism is closely related to their evolution. Most life forms that we see today have arisen by accumulation of changes in the body design that allow the organism possessing them to survive better. Charles Darwin first described this idea of evolution in 1859 in his book The Origin of Species. You must have heard the term survival of the fittest. It means the organism best adjusted to their environment are most successful in surviving and reproducing. Robert Whittaker in 1959 suggested five kingdom system of classification. This classification is based on three things. So the first base is cellular complexity. Means uh, primitive cells, cells without nucleus or developed cells, cells with nucleus. Second is body organization, single celled or multicellular body. And third is mode and source of nutrition, means autotrophic or heterotrophic. On these three bases, it is divided into uh, prokaryotic monera and eukaryotic protista, fungi, plantae and animali. According to most recent classification system of Robert Whittaker, it is divided into five kingdoms, plantae, fungi, animali, Protista and Monera. Each of these five major groups are known as kingdoms. Down to each kingdom, living organism is classified into six hierarchical levels, phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. Every living creature on earth is belong to a kingdom. They are divided into five major kingdoms. These kingdoms are subdivided into phyla, 
The next category is phylum. There are several phyla in each kingdom. It is more organized. For example, chordata includes all animals with backbones like birds, mammals, reptiles, etc. The next category that makes some phylum is class. For example, uh, the phylum chordata is break down into several classes including aves, reptilia, amphibia and several others. Next category is order. Each class is made up of one or more orders. Mammalia is divided into orders. For example, strigiformes. Order is broken down into family like flady, like clads, tigers and uh, strigidae. The next category is genus. For example, bubo. And the genus is broken down into species. For example, species Virginianus. Genus Panthera is divided into species like Panthera tigris, Panthera leo. Note, uh, genus is placed before species. You should remember this. Genus is always placed before the species. Kingdom is the largest unit of classification and uh, contains large number of organisms. It is divided into smaller unit, phyla. Each phylum is divided into classes. Each class is divided into order and each order into family and each family into genus and each genus into species. The number of organisms in each unit is decreases from kingdom to species. Now I will tell you uh, the easiest way to remember this hierarchy. Listen carefully. Remember this sentence. Kids prefer candy over fresh green salad. Kids prefer candy over fresh green salad. So the first letter of each word will help you to remember the modern classification system. Like kids for kingdom, kids K for kingdom, prefers P for phylum, candy for class over means order, fresh family. And green means genus, salad means species. So, kids prefer candy over fresh green salad. Means kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. This is the hierarchy of modern classification system. In five kingdoms, the kingdom Monora consists of unicellular prokaryotes. They are photosynthetic, chemosynthetic, decomposer and parasitic for example bacteria blue green algae and mycoplasma kingdom protista includes protists single celled organisms some are autotrophic while others are heterotrophic presence of appendages like cilia flagella for example amoeba euglena and the kingdom fungi consists of multicellular organisms mushroom molds except yeast which is not multicellular. They are heterotrophic. They have cell wall made up of chitin. Kingdom planty includes all plants. They are autotrophic, multicellular and producer in all food chain. And in kingdom animalia, it includes all animals. They are heterotrophic. So this is the flow chart of complete classification of living organisms. Organisms divided into prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are unicellular, made up of kingdom Monera, and eukaryotes are again divided into unicellular and multicellular organisms. Unicellulars are protista, and multicellular is again divided into with cell wall and without cell wall. With cell wall is again divided into performs photosynthesis that is planty and do not perform photosynthesis that is fungi and without cell wall is the animali so the organism is basically divided into five major kingdoms that is monera protista planty fungi and animali so that's all if you like my video then please do subscribe so that you can get the notifications of my upcoming videos and please like, share and subscribe my channel.